Should you go with AMD or Intel? That is the age old question that many have been trying to answer for decades. If you're looking for the simple, clear cut answer, you might just wanna keep looking because that's not how I do things around here. Today, I'm only gonna be talking about the current and upcoming lineups from both AMD and Intel. This video is really geared towards the person that's decided that they wanna either buy or build a new PC, not a used one. Understanding the naming of both AMD and Intel processor families can be difficult and complicated. Things like 12900K and 5950X might seem like an alien language to some. So how do you know what's good and what's not? Well, let me break it down for you real quick and try to make it as simple as possible. There are five components that make up a CPU naming. These are brand, tier, generation, model, and suffix. The structure is virtually the same for both companies. You can see the layout from this sweet little picture I found over on Art of PC, which I'll link below. They highlighted each section, making it easy to see. The first component is the brand, which would be AMD or Intel, of course. The second is the tier of the processor. For Intel, this could be something like Core i5, i7, or i9. With AMD, it's names like Ryzen 5, 7, or 9. As the numbers go up, the performance level increases. The third component is the generation. Intel is currently on their 12th generation, while AMD is on their fourth desktop generation. They skipped 4000 series for desktop, I'm not sure why. The fourth column is the model. This works in scale similar to the tier component. The higher the number, the higher the performance. The last component is the suffix. This is something out of the ordinary that the CPU does. For Intel, a K designates overclockable CPUs. On AMD, something like a G means that it has built-in Radeon graphics. I hope this was easy enough to understand, but at least outline the breakdown of CPU part numbers for you. I have some quick things I want you to think about before purchasing your CPU. First up, motherboards are specific to the processor most of the time. Sometimes a motherboard will enable more than one generation of processor to be compatible with it. AMD has done a great job at making their current AM4 lineup run from September of 2016 until fall of this year when AM5 will replace it. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, Intel only usually allows motherboards to support two CPU generations before making you adopt something new. An easy way to check for CPU and motherboard compatibility is to swing over to PC Part Picker. I'll leave a link for it down below. After clicking System Builder at the top, you pick your CPU and your motherboard. This little red bar will most likely show up saying Compatibility Warning. If you select the Details link, you'll see this message. It'll say Warning, the whatever motherboard you picked supports the AMD Ryzen whichever CPU processor with BIOS version blah blah blah. If the motherboard is using an older BIOS version, upgrading the BIOS will be necessary to support the CPU. If this message shows up for you when you add your CPU and your motherboard into PC Part Picker, I suggest that you look for a motherboard that has BIOS flashback built into it. It is a feature they've added in the past couple of years. It's just a button on the back of the motherboard. When you're viewing pictures of them, you can usually see the button that says BIOS flashback. Uh, when you push that, you can actually enable upgrading your motherboard's BIOS without an older generation CPU. So if you buy something like a 5000 series and it doesn't work with that motherboard, all you'll have to do is feed your USB drive in with your BIOS version, push that button, turn everything on, and it will update the BIOS for you. But most of the time, you'll be just fine pairing your new Ryzen 5000 CPU with almost any motherboard that you can purchase right now. RAM is another thing to consider when choosing a CPU. AMD is currently only using DDR4 RAM, while Intel allows you to use DDR4 or DDR5. It's your choice. This is just something to be aware of when picking your CPU since DDR5 RAM is still very expensive. Also remember, RAM is specific to the motherboard, not necessarily the CPU. So if you buy a DDR4 motherboard, you'll wanna buy DDR4 RAM and vice versa. Speaking of buying stuff, let's talk about the current pricing of both these companies. I created a nice little comparison chart that's based on the same skeleton as my GPU comparison I did recently. You can see AMD's current lineup on the right in red and Intel's on the left in blue. Intel's newest lineup, the 12th gen, is so overfilled with products, it's ridiculous. They have sometimes four different versions of the same CPU with only slight differences like overclocking or integrated graphics. 
AMD, as you can see from the chart, likes to keep things simple and has always been very competitive with their pricing to draw sales away from Intel. They have been getting comfortable lately by raising prices to match Intel and in this current generation only offered four choices of CPU up until recently. Both companies have been dropping prices recently because of the competition that they have against each other. And of course, this is always good for us, the consumers. If you're looking to buy something right now, I've put little green dots next to my recommended CPUs based on price versus performance for each tier. Notice, I don't recommend the i9 series of Intel CPUs for 12th gen. Their prices are too high for me to recommend versus the performance you gain over something like the 12700K or 5900X from AMD. If you don't need to buy something right now, what kind of products are on the horizon? Now, all of these leaks I'm going to talk about are just that, leaks. So please take all of this with a grain of salt, but it's always nice to know what you can expect if you're willing to wait. Both AMD and Intel are gonna be releasing new CPUs this fall. I'm gonna talk about AMD's first. AMD's upcoming CPU is Zen 4, codenamed Raphael. This is gonna be based on a brand new AM5 socket, which is gonna be LGA1718, which means it's gonna be just like Intel where the pins are on the motherboard instead of on the CPU. It's based on TSMC's five nanometer node, which is a shrink from the current seven nanometer node. It's said to also only support DDR5. It's gonna have 28 PCIe Gen 5 lanes, and supposedly it'll have RDNA 2 onboard graphics, which AMD doesn't have on any CPU currently. Taking a quick look at what Intel has coming, they're gonna be releasing their 13th generation of CPU, and its code name is Raptor Lake. It's based on LGA's 1700 socket, supporting currently their 12th gen, and it will be supporting their 13th generation this fall. They're still using their hybrid chip design with big cores and little cores, which seems to be working out well for them. They'll offer up to 24 cores and 32 threads. It's gonna be based on their 10 nanometer node, otherwise known as Intel 7. I'm not sure if it's gonna require DDR5 or allow you to do a combination of both like the 12th gen does now. And it's gonna have 20 PCIe Gen 5 lanes. As you can see, there are some pretty exciting offerings coming from both Intel and AMD. Now, of course, we've come full circle back to the original question that I asked at the beginning of the video. Should you go with AMD or should you buy Intel? My question to you is, do you want the best deal or do you want the newest tech? If you want the best deal, I'd say AMD has the whole package. They have great prices, lots of cores, and awesome gaming performance. Now, if you want the newest tech, wait till the fall and you'll get just that. It could be AMD or it could be Intel. At least now you know what all those crazy numbers mean. If you wanna keep up on the latest PC hardware and find out what's good and what's not, make sure you subscribe down below. And while you're down there, click that like button for me because it really helps grow the channel. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next video. Cause I don't wanna lose you I hope you feel that way too No, I